Hi, and welcome to a new series for wedding videography. This is aimed at people who may have been filming weddings for a year or so to absolute beginners. My aim is to give you the confidence to go film a wedding and sort of what to expect. So imagine it sort of a behind the scenes at a wedding without actually going behind the scenes. I'll be covering what equipment I use, the exact settings for that equipment, and the actual situation I'm in, such as bride prep. A little bit about myself. My name's Nick. I've been a full-time wedding videographer since 2018. I set this channel up a few years ago, sort of documenting my journey for being a wedding videographer um, and sort of giving my experiences and what I've learned along the way. So please make sure you like and subscribe. Um, I've got a new video each week, really breaking down each sort of scenario at a wedding. Um, so make sure you hit that bell just so you're notified for when the next video is out. Some of you who already follow my channel will know that last year my daughter was diagnosed with cancer. Um, so last year was, you know, very difficult for us, um, but it was my busiest year filming weddings. This year is slightly different um, as we were supposed to be in America um, a number of times throughout the year, about seven times this year. Um, and for the first visit, we would have been there for a month. So that was supposed to be May. Um, but unfortunately my child did, my daughter did relapse. Um, so we've got a bit more treatment to go through now. Um, but so I didn't book as many weddings in as I usually like to for this year. Um, but lucky enough, I've already filmed three. Uh, the first one was in March, second one was April. Um, all of May, like I said, all of May, I was supposed to be in America. Um, and last week I had another wedding. Um, and I've got another wedding tomorrow. Uh, I've got a few in June, a few in July, some in August. Um, so I'm still pretty busy, but like I said, not as many as I usually like. Um, but I'm going to give sort of real life examples in when I'm, when I'm talking in all the different situations. Um, and I'll try to use this year's, if not, I'll use a little bit of last year's. Um, but my advice is still the same. So for my first video in this series, it's um, preparations and it's mainly targeted at bridal prep um, only because I haven't actually filmed a same-sex marriage yet um, they've all been you know the opposite sex uh, so bride and groom and I always prioritize uh, bride prep um, so I'm always there I do have my top package is my platinum package um, so I usually send a second shooter to groom prep so I'll discuss I'll talk a little bit about that um, and what settings I like them to use um, and sort of the style of, sh style of shots I like to get. Um, and some weddings, well one wedding, I actually didn't go to bride prep whatsoever um, and I actually stayed with the groom. And sometimes I will do groom prep as well if um, they're staying nearby the bride. Otherwise I just get shots of them at the venue before the ceremony starts. So let's talk about the equipment that I actually take in to bride prep. So I always take in my Canon C200, uh, which I'm filming on now, and that sits on my monopod. So I don't take a tripod or anything like that. I have my trusty Peak Design pouch slash bum bag thing uh, that clips onto my belt. And inside that bag, I have um, a spare battery, uh, stickies, my Zoom F1, load of uh, Sony TX650s, and uh, SD cards, um, but so that's that's always on me. Um, so, but the main things I use for the bride prep is just my camera and monopod. Over the years on my YouTube channel, I have talked about you know best cinematic camera settings. Um, I did one not that long ago, sort of updating um, what settings I use, and um, you know different settings for if you're in America, UK. Um, so I'm gonna go through my settings that I use at Bride Prep here in the UK. Um, but you can go to that other video if you're just looking for um, some advice if you are, say, in America. Um, so my this is like, when I'm talking settings, and later on I'm gonna give examples, these will be my go-to settings that I use. I always film uh, 25 frames per second. My shutter speed 
is always that. It's called the 180 degree rule. Um, so basically you have like the cinematic settings, sort of that motion blur. Um, you just double your frame rate. So like I said, frame rate is 25. So my shutter speed will be 50. What I love about my Canon C200 is that I can actually change it to degrees. So I always have that set at 180. So for whatever reason, if I change my frames per second to say 50, um, it automatically keeps my shutter speed with the 180 degree rule, which will be 100 in that instance. Um, so yeah, that's frames per second 25, shutter speed 50, ISO 800, um, I shoot in C-Log 3, and the reason I my ISO is 800 is because that's the native ISO it needs for C-Log 3, um, and I shoot in C-Log 3 because it gives me the best dynamic range from my camera, so I can color grade easily in editing. I film on, um, I think it's the 24 to 70 mil lens, um, it's the 2.8, so my f-stop mainly is 2.8 throughout the day um, and in specific videos I'll talk about when I change that slightly. My white balance, I set it to um, 56, well 5600 Kelvin, which is sort of like warm daylight. Um, I sometimes have it auto um, depending on if there's mixed lighting going on in bride prep, but ideally especially summertime, if there's lots of windows and lights coming in, I just keep it at 5,600 or 5,600 uh, Kelvin. For my audio, I don't actually capture um, any audio during bride prep, only because, because I'm stop starting, you know, you're never gonna film a conversation, I'm not gonna put those conversations in. Um, I know some videographers do capture noise and they sometimes have it in the background um, but personally that's not my style. Um, if I am going to capture any audio it'll be like for a specific reason such as a note being read um, and in that case I'll use one of my Sony TX650s that's in my little uh, pouch. And with these settings um, you want to get your exposure right. right. So if there's a lot of light coming in um, I don't adjust the shutter speed I might adjust the f-stop, that's the only thing, but I usually like it at 2.8. So um, luckily my Canon C200 has a built-in ND filter. Um, if your camera doesn't, don't worry, you can buy variable ND filters that sort of screw onto the lens. I highly recommend getting that and keeping all your other settings the same. So don't be adjusting your frames per second or shutter speed or your ISO just keep them sort of the same throughout the day um, and just use an ND filter if there's too much light in your shot. If you're underexposed, this is where I only adjust my ISO. So on my camera, um, I either adjust it to about 1600 or 3200. They're sort of like the other two ISOs that I quite like without bringing too much noise into um, my camera. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. So bride prep is usually the first place I am turning up to on the wedding day. And I actually still get a bit anxious turning up um, even after all these years of filming weddings. So during my pre-meet, um, and I have done another, as you can imagine, I have done another video on uh, this topic. Um, I find out exactly um, you know, where the bride's getting ready, but also what time hair and makeup are get, getting there. And then I give the bride my time of arrival. So for my style and especially for my feature films, I like to have um, a few minutes of, uh, of preparations in my feature films. So I like to turn up to bride prep usually two to three hours um, before the ceremony time but it's usually around the three. Um, I have been there a bit longer before. I wouldn't recommend it. It can get very boring and drag out and you fa sometimes feel like you're just standing there, sort of in the way. So I'll just give you an example of this. Last week's wedding, uh, the ceremony was at 1.30. I got there at 10.30 and it was perfect timing. The bride had literally just sat down to have her makeup done. 
some weddings I might turn up three hours before and um, the bride's already had her makeup done. Don't overstress this, don't worry if this happens um, because at the end of her completely getting ready sort of hair and stuff, you can always ask the makeup artist if they can just do a little touch up and you can get sort of those classic final shots of their lips being done or sort of a bit of extra mascara. I'm also there usually just before the photographer um, especially last week he turned up at about 11 so about half an hour after me also in your pre-meet it's worth knowing obviously where they are getting ready because this can vary this can be at their house parents house hotel venue salon then back to their house um, so again know exactly where you're heading to for whatever time so again, last week's wedding, um, they were getting ready at the venue. Um, in our pre-meet, they said, oh yeah, the venue's got um, some accommodation. Um, so here's a little tip. The night before, or sort of, sort of the late afternoon before, um, I always message the bride to give them my time, or what I'm, you know, my time of arrival, um, just because if you said it in the pre-meet, they, they may have forgotten. Um, and also, if, um, you know, if they're at a venue, sort of, if the venue's got different cottages or it's part of a hotel, they might have a different room, just find out what, exactly where they're staying. Um, Saves going to reception. Um, so, you know, yeah, like I say, so you know exactly where you're going to. And the reason I ask um, sort of late afternoon the day before is because they would have got there already and they'll be, they'll know where they're staying. No point saying at nine o'clock on the, in the morning on the, on the morning before, because they're probably still in bed, you know, haven't even left their own house yet. Luckily, I um, did ask my bride this because, because they were getting married on a golf course, their cottage was actually a five minute drive from the venue. So it wasn't exactly, it wasn't even, you know, at the venue where you can just walk around to another room. It was literally a five minute drive away. Um, and she pinned me her location um, so that was perfect. So I just got a Google Maps, saw there was like a sort of little private road um, and just carried on straight to bride prep. What does bride prep actually look like? Well, all weddings can be different, but in general, if you get in there three hours before, it usually starts off pretty slow, then speeds up towards the end. So let's look at last week's wedding, for example. I turned up at half 10. Um, the bride had literally just sat down to have our makeup. In the room, there was another bridesmaid having her hair done, uh, a flower girl sitting in a chair just on her phone. Um, the mother of the bride was sort of just being busy, typical mum, looking after you, going, do you need a drink, do you need this, do you need that? Um, a couple of other bridesmaids were sort of in and out. Um, and that was sort of like a typical, a typical wedding day. But usually, as the bride's having their makeup done, there's just general they're just chatting away. Um, I, I also get involved in the conversations as well. Um, I want to be quite friendly on the day. I don't want to be the like weird guy over the camera just filming things. Um, I like to get to know my couples, um, have a good laugh with them, and then you're more likely to be recommended to someone else as well. So the photographer arrived about 11 o'clock. Um, I usually wait for the photographer to arrive before getting the dress shot and the shoes and the jewellery because I, I might end up moving them, they might end up moving them, um, but also because the photographers usually know how to pose them nicely as well. For me, posing dresses and stuff, I'm not too worried about that. I, let, I do prefer, let the photographer take that. Um, as long as I've got a nice dress hanging up, I do a little video. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I wait for the photographer to get there before doing that. Um, but because he got there about 11, the makeup artist was, she, she was actually quite quick at her makeup and she wasn't far off um, finishing the bride. So we waited for the bride to finish her makeup um, before heading up to um, where the dress was and get those shots. And again, whilst um, the bride was having her makeup done, we had other bridesmaids coming in and out, um, pouring drinks and stuff. So I was just, capturing that as well. Again, whilst she was having her makeup done, um, I wasn't constantly filming her having her makeup done. I sort of do it in stages, um, like to get a little bit at the beginning, but I never put those in the highlights films that get shared. Um, that would only be for the feature film. 
um, which is private use. Um, but during this time, I also go out and get some venue shots as well. Um, if I am actually right on the venue, um, I'll go get sort of the drone shots as well. Um, but in this case, I literally just got a couple of outside shots because obviously I'd have, I'd have to drive five minutes, set everything up, like the drone, drive back. It was just easier to um, sort of have a chilled out morning, just get a few of the venue shots of the bride prep cottage. But when the bride had finished her makeup, she went in to um, have her hair done. And at this time, we had a phone call from the boys to say they had just arrived at the venue, which they were sort of, they were getting ready at as well. So there was another little sort of cottage um, sort of halfway between where the bride was getting ready and the venue. So me and the photographer went down to see the boys, got a little bit of footage of that. And because I was slightly closer to the venue and time was sort of getting on a bit, I then um, went into the venue, got some venue shots, didn't bother with the drone only because we had a lot of people arriving and I never like to get that in my drone video. Um, because I, I, I use this video whilst they're in the ceremony. Um, and this I will explain this further in a, in a later video when I'm sort of talking about specific venue shots um, and ceremony. But um, I got the inside shots of the ceremony and I put my other battery on charge now. Um, and yeah, just set up my other camera. It's a bit of a risk because I leave my kit there. Um, but I know that the groom was then there um, and yeah, it's just one of those risks. You got insurance, it's just, yeah, I leave it there. So when I was, uh, I'll just backtrack slightly. So when I was filming the boys, um, I just did some classic, they, it didn't take long. I just did some classic shots of sort of um, them doing their jackets up and bow ties um, and sort of looking at the watch. Um, and then yes, yeah, so I went to the venue and then I went back to bride prep and she was pretty much done. Um, got there and she said I'm about to get my dress, all the other brides went to get to their dresses. And um, then I got the dress shot of, of her getting into the dress. Um, and then we did the walk in, the dress reveal to her dad and bridesmaids. And then me and the photographer headed off to the ceremony. So that's kind of like what a the bride prep looks like in sort of a timeline um, over the three hours. So now let's talk about the actual shots I use and the settings I use. Um, so as I said a bit earlier on, I like to have a, in my feature film, I like to have usually a good few minutes of preparations. And um, these shots might include um, you know, general shots of what's going on. Um, I'll do close-ups, long shots. It might be bridesmaids having their makeup done, hair done, um, flowers arriving. Um, just, just, just general. You know, people watching TV, people pouring drinks. You know, whatever it is. Um, so my go-to settings are uh, sort of what I explained at the beginning of the video. I'll be 25 frames per second, shutter speed at 50, ISO 800. Um, using C-Log3 and my f-stop will be 2.8 and my white balance usually set at 5600 Kelvin. When it comes to the bride having her makeup done I've got a few classic shots that I like to film um, so it might be a close-up of her hands usually the, with the wedding ring on love to get that maybe holding a drink um, if she's wearing a gown with bride on I always like to put that in and I will do a few safety shots throughout the whole process. Um, so again, in my normal settings, I'll just literally have sort of a, maybe a mid shot, close up, um, quite static, nothing happening. Um, but then the makeup shots that I like to use are um, sort of the final touches. So the lips being done, the eyes being done. Um, and depending on the scenario and the room, I'll add a bit of movement to the shots. So I might just move side to side or dolly in um, they're sort of like the classic shots I'll do but I do change my camera settings for this so I change my camera settings to my, my frame rate to 50 frames per second and then my shutter speed will change because it's a 180 degree rule so I have that at 100 
but everything else will stay the same. So my ISO 800, C log three, auto white balance, that all just stays the same and literally just change my frame rate and shutter speed. Sometimes rooms can be quite tight, uh, so I will use a mirror shot as well sometimes. And like I just said, depending on sort of the stage, I would either be in the 25 frames per second or the 50 frames per second. Um, and I literally vary between the two. Um, so it gives you a bit more to play with when you're editing. And the reason I film in 50 frames per second is I slow that down in post-production as well. So it all goes a bit slow-mo. I love to get the dress hanging up. Um, so again, I usually add a bit of movement to this shot and film in 50, 50 frames per second with all the exact settings I just mentioned. And shoes again, I sometimes pose them within the same shot as the dress um, or jewelry. But again, usually in, I film in slow motion. Um, and sometimes I actually put a freeze, I actually freeze frame it as well. Um, so I literally film in the slow-mo in the 50 frames per second, but then in post-production, that's when I sort of decide on what exactly I want to do with that shot. Once the bride has had her makeup done, um, depending on the situation, um, if sometimes the bridesmaids all have the same sort of gowns, um, we do like a little shot with them. And I usually just film that on 25 frames per second, uh, where they're sort of cheersing each other and having a laugh. And then once the bride is getting into her dress, I always ask them to give me and the photographer a shout, just as sort of like the last few buttons need doing up. Um, never be in there when they're actually getting ready. Um, and again, I'll be in slow motion for this one. And I usually film um, either the buttons being done up or sort of like a necklace being put on. And then once the bride is um, fully ready, again, I'm still in the 50 frames per second, and I usually like to stand them, but it's usually the photographer who leads this anyway, but I like to have them stood sort of in a window or a door and we'll use the natural light and I'll have them sort of close up with them holding their flowers or a bit of movement as well with the camera. So the last thing I film uh, for bride prep is the dress, is the dress reveal to her dad or the bridesmaids or the mum or whoever they want to do it, but typically it's to the dad because he, comes over um, to see them, um, to walk it then, to, you know, get in the wedding car, whatever it is, to walk it down the aisle. Um, and he hasn't been there all morning. So uh, for this, I go back to 25 frames per second um, with, you know, my shutter speed will then be 50 and everything else will stay the same. And the idea of this is to capture the dad's reaction. Um, I do love it when I can see the bride coming down, sort of walking into the room. Um, so ideally, I like to have the dads and the bridesmaids all sitting or standing um, in one area, capture a bit of the bride coming down, sort of like five seconds, six seconds, um, and then turn the camera and get dad's reaction. Um, sometimes we have had it where, if, especially in a small room, um, for instance, my March wedding, uh, the bride was already standing there in the room and I got the dad's reaction as he walked through the door. Hopefully that did sound simple, but that's pretty much bride prep. Um, I've sort of given some examples of the shots that I like to capture um, and the settings I use, and then the sort of the, the, the settings I change to and add a bit of movement to. Um, so yeah, that's bride prep. Groom prep, um, again, this is a bit different for me because it's either I don't do it, um, send my second shooter there, or I film him at the venue, or like I did on last week's wedding, I did get him at uh, the room he was getting ready in. So um, again, as you'll pro probably be surprised by this, I usually keep it, um, especially if I'm telling my second shooter, just keep it 25 frames per second, um, 50 shutter speeds, you know, ISO 800, or whatever their camera they're using, um, you know, their native ISO. And if they can, it shoot in S log um, or C log, um, which gives me, for when it comes to editing, I can match the colors up nicely. Um, and the style of shots is sort of the watch shot, uh, the bow tie, uh, the waistcoat. Um, if my second shooter's there with 
uh, the groomsmen all getting ready. Similar stuff to bride prep, really, with the bridesmaids. Just capture, just film, just stuff that's going on. Um, don't overthink it. Just, just film it. <laughs> um, so sometimes I do film them at the venue, and I have occasionally filmed in 50 frames per second as well. Um, sort of them already getting ready, sort of looking at their watch. Um, so yeah, just like I said, I haven't really got specific shots I use for groom prep personally, um, and I just mix up both either 25 frames per second or 50 frames per second. So I just wanna give a little um, sort of things to remember um, at the end of this video, and that is battery management. So I know uh, my battery's here. So I use the BP A30 on my C200, and that usually lasts um, most of bride prep. Um, so in my pouch, I have my other camera, and sometimes I end up, so my other camera battery, which is the bigger one of this, so the AP60. Um, so usually that gets to at least when the bride's getting into her dress. So whilst I'm waiting around, I just swap out the camera battery, turn the camera back on, and I'm ready to, to roll um, and just film whatever's, whatever's about to happen. Um, so before the ceremony, I will get this on charge. So that's either at the venue or if it's a bit of a, a 30 minute drive, uh, for example, I'll charge that in my van. Um, I've got a cigarette lighter thing that has like a 300 watt inverter and that just charges my battery. Um, because you don't want to then go into another battery and then, um, well, this is, well, this is for me cause I've only got two batteries. Um, but then run that one down and you haven't got another battery to um, for it to work. But like, like I said, this one usually lasts about two hours and my other one lasts about four. So um, usually my other one lasts until we're sitting down for the wedding breakfast anyway. Um, but if they go straight into speeches and you're thinking, oh, I haven't got enough battery, make sure you've got your other one on charge. And the other sort of uh, thing to remember is ND filter. Like I said, I leave my settings exactly the same, but if I'm overexposed, I will just change my ND filter rather than um, sort of my shutter speed um, and occasionally change the f-stop as well. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, I've got more videos on the different scenarios during the wedding coming out every week. Um, so make sure you like and subscribe, hit the bell button and you will be notified. So see you in the next one, bye bye.